Hey guys, you're hanging with CoolCat199, and in light of Minecraft coming out with a pretty major update to world customization, I figured it's about time to update that old how to customize your super flat world in Minecraft video. I'm going to go over as much information as I could find at this time, and there will be timestamps and other useful things in the description, so be sure to check that out. Okay, so let's just get these obvious ones out of the way here. You have a uh, world name, name it whatever you like, so you can remember what you're doing in the world or just have a funny name, I don't know. You got your three core game modes, survival, hardcore, and creative. You have your four difficulties, normal, hard, peaceful, and easy. Um, you have cheats, which when on allows you to use commands, like it says here, like slash game mode, slash experience. Uh, there's also game rules you can change when you have allow cheats on, or you can come to this new to 1.16 game rules options list excuse me, where you can check off or, or edit, rather, all of these different options. These are all game rules that you can change in-game with commands, but this makes it a little easier, I guess. Um, and then we come to data packs. Data packs can be used to override or add new things, such as advancements, functions, loot tables, structures, recipes, and tags without code modification. To install a data pack, simply drag and drop a file into Minecraft itself like so. All you do is go to data packs, have your uh, your data pack um, on another monitor or another part of your screen if you only have one monitor and just drag it and drop it into available and then you want to allow yes. Mine is red. It should work as far as I know. It's just red because it's incompatible like here it says. Um, so I want to make that selected. I don't care. Um, and yeah, that's what you have to do to install a data pack for your specific world you are creating at that moment. Um, real quick, before I show you how the what the data pack does, just because um, data packs load their data based on the load order. So here, I guess, is the load order. So friendly creepers will load first because it's at the top, and then the rest of Minecraft, the built-in just Minecraft, will load after this one. It goes, it works its way down top to bottom. So if I did this, Minecraft would probably override friendly creepers if I had to guess, but I don't want that to be the case. So done. We want to make new world. Yes. And while this world's loading, I'll just say that you can check. There's a few ways to check if your uh, mo uh, data pack is loaded. And you can do that by pressing F3, holding F3, and then tapping T. It'll do whatever it's doing. And reload, reload the world, I guess. Or if you have cheats enabled like I do, we can just do slash data pack. No. Sorry. Slash data pack list enabled. There. There we go. See? So there it is. We got the vanilla, like I said. And then we have the friendly creepers. So it should work. All we do is get a creeper, get mode survival. There is my friend. And he just gets chunky. And if I go away, he follows and gets chunky when he gets close. I don't know. That's just a very simple example of what data packs do. I'm trying to make this video like an all in one. Just uh, of world customization and I guess obviously data packs too but to my knowledge that's all I could find about data packs so on to the next thing now it's time to go into the world of more world options so again we'll get rid of the easy ones easier ones um, there's the seed for the world generator a seed is basically a randomized number that indicates how the world will generate basically if you input the same number as someone else, you're going to have the same exact block layout and world if you leave all these settings alone. Um, generate structures, pretty self-explanatory. If you don't want like villages and dungeons to spawn, you can just tick that off. I usually do for creative super flat worlds. Um, what else do we got? Bonus chest. It's a chest that spawns near you your first time you load the world. It'll give you some basic supplies, like some wooden pickaxes and maybe an axe and some food, like an apple and maybe some wheat and some torches, I think. Haven't used it in a while. I'm not a baby. Um, 
and then you have import settings and unfortunately I couldn't find much anything on import settings but I will keep researching on it and possibly make a dedicated video about it once more information is figured out about this um, and then we move on to world types. There's a bunch of world types. Just to preface this, I will be having videos of what each biome looks like down in this corner somewhere, so you're obviously going to see that, but I won't right now. Um, you got default world type, which is the good old regular Minecraft world generation. You have super flat, which creates a, or generates a customizable world with one block per Y level, I guess that's how I would describe it. I'll show you what I mean. Um, okay, so to go in depth on super flat customization, um, here's the default layout. So it works from bottom to top. So bottom will spawn one layer of bedrock at the lowest Y level. And then above this bedrock will be two layers of dirt. And above that will be one layer of grass at the top. So if we go to presets, they give you some nice ones, like uh, this one is good to make your own caves. Um, this one's good for redstone. I don't know, this one I don't think has anything. It's just a bunch of air, you have to spawn your own block in. But we want to make our own. And for this example, I'm just going to do some th simple things. So at the bottom, where the, the bedrock was in the first example I showed, or in the example the game gave, whatever, I want some obsidian. So you type in the block ID, which is obsidian. And I'll provide a list of block IDs in the description, just for your convenience. Um, so yeah, that's the block ID for obsidian. And then we separate block type with a comma. And if we want more of one block stacked on top of itself, like there were those two dirt blocks in the first example, Say I want 12 blocks of, I tell myself that the asterisk, which is a shift, hold shift, press 8, that's what this is. Um, that's saying like 12 of Minecraft yellow terracotta. So quickly, we have one layer of obsidian at the bottom and 12 layers of Minecraft yellow terracotta. And then to finish off, when you're done, you have your top block there, like if I wanted to do just another block of dirt, whatever, to top it off. Um, you hit the semicolon button and then provide the Minecraft biome ID for the world. So let's just make it a desert. I'm going to use preset. And there you go. Just like I wanted my obsidian at the bottom, my 12 layers of yellow terracotta, and then just whatever dirt at the top to cap it off. Um, and if you want to share amongst yourselves in the comments with friends, with me, whatever, all you have to do is control A to copy or to highlight everything, sorry, and then control C to copy it. And then just paste this like in message your friends with it, tell them to just paste it in this preset box and then they can use it. I can use it, whatever. If you got a cool one, share it. I'll share a few of my own in the description. Um, so what do we got next? That was our super flat customization. Uh, so we now have large biomes. And large biomes are basically the same Minecraft world generation, but with increased biome size, obviously. And what that means to me is instead of having, like, for arbitrary example, a thousand by thousand area of blocks of one biome, the large biomes will expand that to like 10,000 by 10,000. Don't know the numbers at all, random guess. But it just makes the biomes a lot bigger, more expansive per biome. Next is amplified. Um, like it says, it's just for fun. It's It looks really cool. It's a, uh, it just spawns, generates rather, some extreme mountains, steep cliffs, some holes in them. It looks really cool, especially with a shader package or a, uh, yeah, a shader pack. You just fly around, take some cool screenshots. Um, a single biome, you can just create a infinitely expansive biome or infinitely expansive world of any one biome. Like if I wanted to make a jungle biome, my whole world, I could do that. Uh, caves, 
again is a single biome option, but it will spawn in an overworld-like cave. It's kind of hard to describe. You'll, you'll see it in the picture uh, or in the video down here. And then we have floating islands, um, which when, okay, so all, again, it's a one biome thing. You pick your biome, it'll spawn that. And to me, it reminds me of the end world, the island where you fight the ender dragon. It seems about that size and shape. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. And uh, okay, to be honest, the end of the video caught me off guard. I was just kind of rambling off my notes here. Um, but that is all, I guess. So really, thank you guys for watching and see you next time.